Hello IT Bros, welcome back again to my IT workshop. So in this video we're going to uh, do a few things. We're going to set up a TFTP server, we're going to connect to a switch, we're going to back up the configuration, and we're, go we're going to update the new image, the new I iOS, and we're going to upgrade it. So this is the scenario we have. We have the TFTP server, which is the computer I'm recording on. It's not a laptop, it's a desktop actually, and we're going to work with these two switches. We're, uh, for this video, we are going to work for the switch on the left, the Cisco 2960 to ports, and uh, with the corresponding IP address that you see. So what we're going to do first is, I already have installed uh, the TFTP server software, which is the TFTP D64. Uh, so the, this, the link is going to be in the description below. So you install it, it's next, 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 and you're going to have this piece of uh, software. So you have the, this, this main screen. By the way, like I said, uh, my, and I show you, the, my IP is 10.1.11.100. So you have to match it where you see this part. It has to be the same as your computer because that's going to be your TFTP server. You can install it anywhere in your network, but in this case, it's going to be here in my computer. The next thing to check is um, your directory. So in this case, uh, I have changed it. I'm going to go to my PC. I have two hard drives, physical hard drives, and in the C is the operating system and the software. Um, but in the D is uh, many other things like ISO, um, files and Im I mean images and all that. In this case, it's going to be my TFTP folder as well. So the only thing I did, you go to browse, um, you go to the disk, in this case D, and you create a new folder. And that's pretty much it. You can put it anywhere you want. So with that done, we go to settings. And in this part, you have to make it match. So it has to be the same folder that you have created and chosen. So you do the same as we did before. Uh, we're going to put the no security in other words. So this one you have to, to click this uh, option. So we will have the permission to create new files when we are saving our configuration from the network device. Uh, like I said, we're going to work in switches, but this works again for every device. In this window, we only need these two selected, the TFTP server and the syslog. We don't need anything else. So if you have anything else, just unclick it. Like it, the DHCP server or DNS, we don't really need it. Or the client for TFTP. So you click OK. Technically, that's all they're going to know. Oh, I was for forgetting. Um, what we also need in this case is we have to make sure that this software has ports open. In my case, I'm using Kaspersky. So I had to go here and I had to create a rule. As you can see here, I click allow. I'm going to choose the several options that I have here. In this case, um, th that's what I have done before because I was having problems connecting to the TFTP server. So this is act the actual rule I created. You can see it's pretty easy to, to configure. The 69 is the port that TFTP uses. So Keep that in mind, and I don't care the origin port. It can be anything from the from the network device. All right. So with that said, there is another option. Uh, now I'm connected to a, a server. In this case, uh, I have installed the same software here, but it was not working. And the reason is uh, the configuration is different. In this server, I don't have Kaspersky. Uh, it's control panel, um, firewall. In this case, I have to go to this place. Uh, you click there, and we're going to, to look. In this case, it's already configured, but TFTP server, you have to go allow uh, certain applications to have uh, permission to go through the firewall. So this is the place where I have installed the software, the TFTP server. So you just look for it, and you add it. So that way you can, this application is going to open um, the, the port 69 of this computer. So I just wanted to show you this. We're not going to work with this server, actually. Uh, I just wanted to show you another way to do it. Well, 
in my case that for the configuration of the TFTP server is really straightforward only make sure that you select the right options and, and open the port or configure it correctly now um, well this is my the folder actually and this I'm going to delete the configuration I have uh, this is the image that bin that we are going to upload um, in a few in a few minutes as you can see here it's in my folder here I'm going to so here's where the the backups are going to be created now we are set I'm going to open this application called Patty I'm going to leave the description below this is the IP like I showed you in the in the network diagram we're going to connect to it Okay, we're going to put our username and using an SSH connection. I'm going to the password, I'm going to enable it, another password, and here we are. Now, what we have to do here is I'm going to save it just in case, even though I know it's the configuration is safe. Now I'm going to save to back the configuration up in the TFTP server. So I go to the command, copy startup config, because that's the one I want to to back up uh, TFTP, I type, I type the IP address, which is 10.1.11.100. What is the name going to be called? I mean, the file that we are going to create. So switch, since this is called, this switch is called switch. So switch config txt. And technically that's it. So if we go to the folder, you can see here the configuration. I'm going to open it. Um, well, so you can see the, all the configuration and it looks the way it should, really clear. But now here's the thing. I have installed this application, which is Notepad++. You can download it again. It's in the link in the description. <laughs> the link's in the description. And the difference is if you open this file, the TXT file with the Notepad, which is the default application, Windows, you're going to have it like this. Mm, doesn't look so good, right? So that's why I decided to install Notepad++ and make it my default uh, application to open TXT um, files. So this is way better, right? So now let's proceed. We're going to close this. And now we are going to grab this, this bean um, folder, a folder, um, the, <laughs> this iOS update, firmware update, and we are going to put it to the switch. So for that, I'm going to check what the version I'm working on right now on my switch. And I see that I have the version, well, there is a model, version 15.2. So the one we're going to install is, as you can appreciate, is higher than what we have right now. So what we're going to do is issue the commands um, from the switch to grab this um, firmware, firmware update from the TFTP server. So we have more information about, here's the, well, here's the bin file for the current um, iOS version in this switch, which is outdated. Now we're going to proceed with the commands. Okay. So the commands are in a second. You have to make sure because you don't do this all the time. I mean, only you backup. You make a backup every time that you have a a change in your net in your network. So it's not like you do this all the time. Now we have the name correctly. We go back to the to the console and we're going to go copy tftp flash so we're going to copy from the tftp server to the flash we put the ip address of the tftp server now we are going to grab the name complete it well, the complete name and we're going to paste it so this is the name it's going to have in the switch we click Okay, well, enter. And this is going to take a while, guys. Uh, it's around 20 megs or more. And 
I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to come, come back when everything finishes. Um, it's going to take about more than 15 minutes, so always do it with a lot of time <laughs> ahead or in advance. So I'm going to leave it there and I'm going to come back. Well, we're back. So the the copy the copying process has finished. And we're going to, as you can see here, those are the symbols that, mm, that the time it took, which is a lot. Now we're going to check the flash of the switch and we're going to look for the for the for the file that bin file. Let's look for it. Uh, as you can see it, we have the same file. So it's in the switch now. So now we have to make we have to upgrade it. We have to make this um, this upgrade software or document or bin file to be the primary in the switch. So now we're going to issue the commands um, to make it happen. So now issue the commands. Let's see. This is in the flash right now. This is the one we're going to replace. Yeah, that's the one. So now let's proceed. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start pinging this switch because we're going to lose connection since it's going to update and it's going to shut down, it's going to reboot a few times. Um, well, for you to know that we are going to shut down the switch or the switch is going to shut down during the process. So this is going to be kind of a long, so I advise you not to do it in in working hours. Normally you do this after hours or, yeah, normally after, after hours or weekends. Okay, so we go to boot system, flash, come on, followed, By the by the name of the of the bean file. So I'm making sure that the name is correct. Uh, I'm going to do the same that I did a few seconds ago. I'm go well a few minutes ago. It's a long time now. I'm going to copy the name because we have it now on the switch. So it's done, so I'm, I'm telling the switch, next time you reboot, you're going to boot with this uh, with this bin file, with this upgrade. So now, what's the command to reboot the switch? Uh, this, uh, this is the one. Yes, this is the boot, the boot command. But, I mean, this is the boot uh, file that is going to use the next time we reboot the switch. So now we are going to proceed to restart the switch. So. The changes are going to take uh, are going to take place. So for that, um, we're going to re uh, restart. No, it's not to restart. What was the command for rebooting the switch? Uh, restart, reboot. Yes, now. Yeah, that's the one. Reload. We're going to click yes, confirm. Now we have lost connection. Uh, we're going to see the ping fail in the in the next seconds, and we can see that it's failing. It's uh, the process is going on. So I'm going to stop the video because it's going to take some time. And I'm going to come back when it's ready. All right. So you can do this for any other device, a router, an access point. I'm doing for the switches because that's the one I have available at the moment. Okay, welcome back. Took like 15 minutes or so. Okay, I have connection again. I, the pink is working. So what we're going to do now is verify that the app, the app great has been successful so we go to the same process we use the party software we log into our switch the same ip address everything the same to the password enable the password again 
and show version. We check, where is it? Number two, well, I don't need this anymore. Um, so, version 15, that two, that, that six, E1. Yep, that's the one. So this is the same one. So the, the upgrade has been successful. It took, like I said, a little longer, but that's it, guys. So that will be for the video, guys. Uh, thank you for watching. I'm going to do the second for the for the SG500, which is using, which we are going to upgrade using a web interface. So thank you very much. If you like this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you very much.